This little tile top table does make a great weekend project, and it all starts with the base. And the base is actually four separate frames, and the frames are four separate pieces. There are two vertical pieces, or legs, and there are two horizontal pieces, the rails. Now, normally when we're making frames like this, we'd use mortise and tenon joinery, but in this case, we're gonna use pocket screw joinery. It's easy, it's fast, and it's great for a little weekend project like this. Well, in order to make the frames, I started by cutting the styles, or the legs, to length and to width. Now, there's a little bit of difference. On two of the frames, the styles, or legs, are one width. And on two other frames, they're a little bit narrower. And the reason for this is that later when the frames are all assembled, we want to make sure that the visual width on both sides of the base is the same for both of these frames. So in order to accommodate that and to have joinery, we cut two pieces a little bit wider. Then on the wider pieces, we cut a rabbit. That'll join the frames together, and it'll look something like this. When they're joined, now the narrower piece fits into the rabbit, and both sides of this leg are now the same visual width. So we'll get to that all a little bit later. For now, I have to finish up on the legs. There's one more step. I went over to the bandsaw and cut a slight taper along the inside edge of all the legs. And that taper, it just adds a nice little visual touch to lighten up the base of the table. Well, after those tapers are cut, there's one last step, and that is to go ahead and cut the rails for all of the frames, and they're cut to the same length and width on all of them, so there's not too much complication there. Well, after the rails are all cut to size, I can head over to this jig and just mount the rail into the jig, clamp it in place, and then mount the special bit into the drill. Now I'm gonna drill two pocket holes in each end of all the rails. Well, that should take care of all the pocket holes. So I've got two pocket holes on both ends of all the rails. Now there are two more holes to drill and that's to attach the base to the top of the table. And to do that, I've drilled pocket holes along the top edge of the top rail, and that'll screw up into the top. So all I have to do is mount the rail in the jig, clamp it in place, and then drill the holes. Well, with all those holes drilled on the top edge of the rails, there's one more step that I wanted to do. Now, normally when we join the legs to the rails, we want a very tight joint line. But in this case, it's outdoor furniture, and we actually wanted to accentuate the joint line. So I went over to the router table to route a slight chamfer. I mounted a chamfer bit in the router table and routed a slight chamfer around the edges of the legs and the rails. And after cutting the chamfers on all the pieces, there's one last step, and that is to cut this rabbit in the wide legs. And I'll do that over at the table saw. Well, the four frames are joined together to form the base. And to do that, we use just a simple rabbit joint. And that cut is really pretty easy to make. I just mounted a dado set in the saw, raised it to a half inch high, then for the width, it couldn't be easier, no measuring even required. I just used the mating piece until it was flush with the outside edge of the dado set. Now I'm ready to go ahead and make the cut. Well, now with the rabbits cut on all four of the legs, I'm ready to assemble all the frames. Well, now to make assembly go a little bit easier, I made this little assembly jig. All you have to do is put one leg in 
add the top rail, then there's a spacer, and the bottom rail, and the final leg. This will hold all the pieces in place while I just use a pocket screw to screw everything together. Okay, this finishes up the four frames. Now I can assemble those frames to form the whole base, but I'm gonna need some help. Brian, good thing you're here. That's what I'm here for. I've got some of the assembly supplies. Now putting this table together, the base, really is, isn't that much of a challenge, but the thing we wanna make sure is all these parts go together nice and square. All right. Now these rabbits, they'll help square things up pretty much automatically, but just to be sure, we're gonna use some plywood squaring forms to help out. Well, those are kind of slick. All we have to do is add to the sides together and then put this right angle squaring form in there, clamp it up, and it'll hold everything square while we're gluing it up. Now, speaking of glue, this is an exterior project, an outdoor project. We wanna use an exterior glue. Any standard exterior glue will work fine. Right, now when it comes time to assemble things, we're gonna take one of those rabbited frames, we're gonna set it on a couple spacers here, raises things up, gives us room to work, it clamps underneath. Then we're just gonna simply add the glue in the rabbits. Okay, we could add the glue right now, but I like to dry clamp everything first, make sure we've got everything in place, then we'll add the glue. So we'd add on two of these frames, okay. then the last one, the last rabbited frame. This is why it takes four hands. And once that's there, then you can start adding those band clamps. We're just gonna wrap around here like this. Good. And then once you're gonna tighten those up, snug them up. Once those are in place, Add one of the squaring forms, one down here in the bottom, clamp okay. that there. And I'll get another one here at the top and we'll clamp it together. Now we'll have clamps both directions on both of these squaring forms, but it looks like we've got everything ready to go so we can disassemble everything, add the glue in the rabbits and then glue it up. Sounds good. Okay, after the glue dried on the whole base assembly, I went ahead and just finished up routing a chamfer on the outside corners. This chamfer goes along with all the chamfers I routed on all the other pieces before and totally hides this joint line here. You know, it's a great looking detail, but we still got a little bit more work to do right. here. Now I finished up, uh, put a couple cleats and some slats. They're gonna go along the bottom, create a storage place. Best of all, they're gonna hide those pocket holes on the bottom. Yes, good. So we just put the cleats here down on the bottom and then a slat goes on. We can actually use it as a spacer. So the slat is even with the top edge of the rail. Then we'll go ahead and screw these down and then screw the slats in from the bottom. Once that's all done, we can move this whole base out of the way and get to work on the top. We better get to it then. Okay. You know, adding the cleats and slats to form the bottom of the table really didn't take all that long, so now we can focus on the tabletop. Well, let me get this base out of the way then. Now the tabletop really consists of just a couple of frames that are gonna surround and support the tile we're using. Right, and like everything else on this project, it's assembled with pocket screw joinery to assemble the four pieces. And then we drilled some shank holes and that'll be used to join both the top and the bottom frame. And finally, we actually routed a cove along the outside edge of this whole bottom frame. Well, that'll take care of the lower frame and then we can focus on the upper frame. Right. Now there's a little bit more going on here and that's because it needs to accept the tile that we're gonna be using. Well, exactly. All these pieces need to be sized so that the frame opening actually accepts the exact size of the tile. Now this is a slate tile. Now we wanna leave a size it so there's about a 16th of an inch gap all around this tile. And once you have all the parts cut to size, spend a little time, chamfer all the edges, that way it'll match the rest of the project. Right, then we can assemble this frame and then we can join the two frames together. However, when we do that, we wanna make sure these joint lines are actually offset. You know, that's gonna help strengthen that overall assembly. Then the entire assembly can be screwed to the base using the pocket holes in the upper rails. Right, and once that's done, we're gonna add some slats in here and they're sized to fit inside the frame. And then we can add our slate tile and drop it right into place so it's flush with the top. Now before we attach the tile permanently, we wanna make sure we add a couple coats of an exterior finish. Right, now that exterior finish will keep this table good for a long time. And once the finish is dry, we can actually take the slate tile back out of here and then add some dabs of silicone adhesive 
and put the tile back into place and then press it down. Well, I think we're ready to finish up this table. Get the base over here. Top in place. Pretty good. Looks good. You know, when the finish goes on here, this is going to be a nice little outdoor table, all made with pocket screws. Woodsmithplans.com. Hundreds of professional, high-quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy-to-download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions, full-color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides, plus we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts all fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. Woodsmithplans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.